All right. Welcome to the test meeting. Um, Matteo, uh, you and Daniel have a conversation about boxes. Yeah, um, so I, I need to. So after the conversation uh, last week, um, I was sent an existing uh, guest uh, where the in interaction of boxes and proxies was already being discussed like and analyzed last year. Uh, really great stuff there. Um, and I think thinking about that, like it comes down to the fact that a proxy in front of a box, in my opinion, no matter what, will always will never be uh, fully transparent. Uh, you will be able to realize it is a proxy. Uh, no, sorry, not for a box, for a record or a tuple, um, because. Um, when you create a new record or tuple that contains the same data, it's no matter what, it's supposed to give you back something that has the same identity. So if you go in and spread a record uh, all, uh, and you can verify that what you get from just the spreading is um, is triple equal uh, to what you gave it, to what you spread. Um, of course, if what you spread is actually a proxy of something that will give you a real record and not a proxy of a thing. Um, so you will be able to realize that what you had in the first place was a proxy and uh, not a, uh, a record. So if we move away from like trying to make proxies uh, of record and tuples behave like records and tuples, like their uh, identity, uh, and just them being objects, um, then it uh, then they're just any other object that has the same content as uh, a record in a uh, tuple. What might happen is that their prototype might actually be a tuple prototype. Uh, but again, you should be able to construct an object that way, actually. Uh, I'm not sure how that would behave. But um, you, you have the instance of behavior. And, and, and in general, like a full membrane would probably uh, create a proxy for the prototype object, so it's not really uh, a problem. You wouldn't be able to to re. It would behave like an object, basically. Um, in the context of membranes, I believe we still do want to be able to efficiently, somewhat efficiently, uh, pass records and tuples uh, through without having to go and deeply find uh, or and, and by efficiently I mean a way to go in find all the boxes and be able to replace the content of the box with a proxy uh, of the box and the the difference with a regular uh, object and between regular object and record and tuples is that you have to deeply go find all those mutable uh, places in the record or tuple uh, so you have to deeply traverse the objects and, and uh, eagerly create a proxy of all those exit points. Uh, where uh, if you have an object and even an, uh, a hardened object, until the object or hardening is observed, you can um, you can lazily uh, do that uh, and, and create those, those proxies lazily. Um, so what I'm suggesting is a helpers for boxes that allow to find boxes in a record or tuple, however uh, deep they may be, uh, and a map helper to be able to map a box with another box. Um, and I think the last interaction uh, with the callable realm, or whatever name it will be, uh, would be maybe to have boxes of functions be automatically replaced for a box box of an exotic wrapper function. So the same way currently you pass a function through the callable boundary. Uh, if you pass a box with a function, it uh, it sends through a box with the wrapped function. Uh, and so the idea is that if you have a record with boxes or objects or functions or anything that has a, uh, an identity, um, the membrane would be able to go in and say like, okay, all those identity uh, things in the boxes, replace them with the magic function uh, that um, similar to, uh, to what is done currently. 
uh, in uh, in the membrane. Uh, so now you have a function that can do the magic uh, mapping between the two realms. Um, you replace all those boxes with that. You send it on the other side. On the other side, you have boxes with all those. You uh, again uh, iterate over all uh, all those boxes that has function, and you create a proxy from all those um, wrapped functions on the other side. And so now you rec you recreate uh, a record on the other side that has the same structure. And now that contains proxy objects for everything that had an identity on, uh, before sending through the membrane. Uh, can I get? Can, uh, uh, sorry, Bradley, go ahead. Sure. Just to clarify, if you round trip this wrapping, you do not get the original, correct? Right. So okay. Yeah. That's so all I need but, to know. so b b before we go down to the rabbit hole, there, I'm. From my understanding up to this point, it was that the record would not be duplicated when going through the, the, the callable boundary. You get the record on the other side is when you try to access something out of the box that we can do something about it. Um, and the second part of it is that uh, initially we say, well, if you do have a box, then you cannot send it. We can work toward getting the box to work later on, but I, I was always hoping that we could make the, the, the box simply doing what, what, what Matthew just described in, in terms of uh, when you try to access the, the function out of a box, you get the wrap function. But at that time, you don't necessarily have to duplicate the record because on the other side you will never be able to really get access to the other record on the other side to compare and see that it's actually different it's not observable so you could get the original record if the box is the one that is preventing you from accessing something um, could be that the box itself when you try to access something tells you if it is a function you're gonna get the wrapper if it is not a function you get a throw Sorry, uh, Carity, that doesn't correspond to the current version of the proposal. The current version of the proposal is that it would throw, if the box contains an object, it wouldn't do this deferred deferred error. And the reason for that was because this round tripping concern that, uh, that Bradley raised, that you, know, you can kind of round trip an object if we allowed that through a box. And so we decided to just be more restrictive at first. Uh, about the membrane over record and tuple, um, there were some parts that there of that idea that I that I liked that seemed interesting, and there were some parts that I wasn't quite convinced by. So I'm pretty sure that if we have a membrane over record or tuple, it should preserve that they it, it is a record or tuple. So that means two things. One thing is that it would return true from like record dot is record and tuple dot is tuple, which I think are, are predicates that we agree would need to exist. And the other thing is that the triple equals or object dot is based structural deep equality works. I think it's important. Those are those are key to the programming model and and membrane should should work with them. Uh, the, well, well, Daniel, uh, clarification there. So when you say it works, and and I was always on the assumption that it will work by preserving the identity, not by creating a new thing on top of it. Well, the, we're but, talking but, about the case where it has a box that has an object in it, and okay. I'm and I'm saying that the the previous conclusion that we reached when we discussed this, that's in the current specification, or maybe it's not even in a specification, but the the conclusion that we that we reached previously was that we would prohibit sending boxes that contain objects or sending anything that recursively contains an object with identity to uh, across the the realm boundary we did not adopt the the other suggestion that that we would allow it and just prohibit it on the on the box access so it sounds like the core need is to be able to replicate this so sorry, this thing Sorry. Sorry, Daniel. Like, I'm, I'm trying to understand. So, based on the idea that we will, that any that idea that we already agree on at some point, that you, you will not be able to send a record tuple if he has a, a box on it. Okay. So, if that's the case, um, then when the record goes through the membrane, while well, the expectation is that the record will just 
be passed through like any other uh, primitive value. You don't need to throw a proxy around it. Is that it? No, the no, the expectation as written in Nicolo's document is that if it contains a box that contains an object, then you have to eagerly convert it. So I liked the idea from uh, Matthew's um, exposition that we could have some way to look through some nested records and tuples and find all the boxes containing objects, all these exit points, and map them. So right now that's possible to do manually, eagerly. And uh, what I think what we would want is a way to do this uh, lazily. So what if we had a form of record or tuple or box that was like, well, this is a mapped record or tuple or box. So when you access it, uh, when you reach one of these exit points, then if it's the first time you reach one of these exit points, then a function gets applied to the contents of the box um, or it gets applied to something. I'm not sure exactly what the contents of the box. I guess that doesn't really work because you're on the wrong side of the membrane already. So yeah, I, I, I have, I'm I have very a confused. conceptual problem here with the identity of the, of such a record. What? Uh, oh, well, the identity would be defined by just operationally when you do a comparison operation, it will, you know, linearly go through it, compare the different parts. And, uh, so it'll end up forcing in terms of where by force, I mean, like in lazy evaluation terms, uh, any parts of it that it reaches. And once those are forced, then they'll be cached in the object I, in the, I, in the record or tuple. I'm I'm, com I'm I'm continue to be confused. Um, so, so I me, uh, actually do a similar workflow, which may be illustrative. So I don't do things with records and tuples right now. I do things with side tables, and have mappings for symbols generally. So frozen objects and symbols. Um, so these symbols are well known locations. And they act as a way to reference mutable state on two sides of a barrier. Um, so I have two mappings, just like we're talking about right now. And when you go and you actually want to look up the value of that symbol, it fires a trap, which is essentially a getter. It's not as full featured as a getter. It just causes you to reify the identity. Um, and once it's reified, it never changes. Um, so it sounds like similar to what I'm doing here. We want to perform a map operation on a record or tuple, which is a deeply immutable data structure. And it has some small parts of it, which we want to lazily compute the value of uh, when they're accessed. And those need to be accessed in order to form an identity. So we're looking at some kind of trap similar to a getter when these are accessed for whatever reason, property access or identity checks, things of that nature, which has to uh, essentially be populated by the other side of the barrier. Anything that so, traps an identity check makes me very uncomfortable. So, yeah, so, well, then, then we have a choice between I, either we're going to trap the ID Either, yeah. either we're going to do what you suggested and say, well, these are just no longer records and tuples. They don't have yeah. this identity, or we're going to have to force the entire thing whenever the identity is needed. Yeah, I, th I don't, I, I don't I wanna, think there's a third path. I think there is a third path. Um, the, uh, I, I'll, I'll lay out the third path before explaining why I think the paths laid out so far break fundamental invariants that we must not break. Um, so uh, the third path uh, 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 depends on an idea, I think originally from Daniels, from Daniel. Uh, and uh, let me start with the Gedanken experiment in a world without records and tuples, with just the world of objects that we have now and membranes that we have now. Um, also, you know, no callable boundary, so we don't have to worry about the complexity of a callable boundary. Um, Right now, when you do a membrane, you have to do a shadow target. If the shadow target is, if the, if the original, if the object, if the, you know, the, the real target is a, a frozen object, then the shadow target 
um, uh, will eventually be a, a, a similarly frozen object, but it's shadow because the properties point at correspond, you know, the, if, the, if the real target is uh, yellow, yellow, then the shadow target is blue uh, and the, the uh, properties of the real target point at other yellow objects, the property of the shadows target pointed other blue targets, which is why there's a shadow target. Now, the Gadokin experiment is uh, in the case where there is no distortion, do you need a, a proxy on the shadow target or could the blue object corresponding to the yellow real target, could the blue object instead just be the shadow target itself? In other words, having constructed the blue shadow target to represent the yellow real target, is, are you, uh, if there's no distortion, is any purpose being served by wrapping a proxy around the shadow target rather than just using the shadow target the way you would have used the proxy? And uh, there, and th there's one issue in uh, the Gedanken experiment that I want to set aside, which is cycles. Uh, in order to use the um, shadow target immediately, uh, you can't lazily create it. Um, the thing the proxy gives you is the ability to lazily create it. Um, uh, if you're in a cycle, uh, the inability to lazily create it would be fatal. Um, but if we constrain this issue to only apply to acyclic structures, uh, then the cycle issue doesn't arise and we only have the expense of having to create things eagerly rather than lazily. So, um, so that's the, the Gedanken experiment. Uh, if, unless somebody contradicts me, I'm going to assume that the answer is yes. We, in that case, we don't need the proxy. We can just use the blue shadow target as if it's the proxy. Uh, I'd agree, but only under the assumption that we eagerly, deeply create that blue uh, object. Yes. Right. That's why. That's why I introduced the acyclic constraint. Well, oh, yeah, I think I, I agree with I, all that. I agree uh, as well, but then when this we is the in, this is the conclusion that Nicolo previously came to, and then Matteo yeah. was concerned about this breaking our lazy creation. Yeah, and I think no. I think I think that I think that breaking the lazy I think of all the things we need to break here, I think the lazy creation is the thing is the is the thing that we can most afford to break. And because there's no cycles, it's just an issue of uh, taking the cost up front versus spreading it out over time. I think this is not quite what I was saying. So what I was saying is, uh, and I think we all agree here, um, since there is no way, what I said is like a proxy in front of record tuple, especially if it's implemented as a uh, identity less object. So type of equals object uh, will always be observable uh, as, as is. So the only path that you have at that point is to eagerly create uh, your your deeply frozen uh, object or slash record. Um, I, I, I went a next step after that, which is why why can't we use records and tuples? Can we somehow use records and tuples to efficiently recreate that that uh, uh, that duplicate that structure? Yeah. So I, I want to so, yeah. okay, can, can I for for a minute or two try? I'm I'm behind. I'm very behind on the. I'm um, sorry, sorry, I have someone in the door. Um, so Maybe I could make my... Uh, there, I want to I also oh, I, go I ahead. Wanna make some points as well about how some of the other solutions here break some things that I think we desperately need not to break uh, for, for reasons um, uh, much deeper, than, you know, much, much bigger than performance reasons. Uh, one thing is uh, identity checks must be uh, must not introduce potential interleaving points. A trap on an identity check introduces an interleaving point right now where JavaScript is safe from interleaving points. 
I know that I can, I can take two objects that I don't trust A and B and say A triple equal B without turning control over to code that, I, that, that I'm not in control of, um, code provided by the providers of A and B. So, 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 I, was, so I was trying to, I was trying to, I, I feel that you guys are a lot ahead of myself. So I'm still stuck back in, 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 in a very specific question. Okay. Uh, which I believe correspond to what Mark was saying and uh, the, the, the description that you gave about the shadow target and so on. So I want to see if you can help me to clarify uh, what the position is there. Uh, it, it is important that the, to understand that the callable boundary doesn't give you access to both sides of the fence. Um, that's the principle there. You don't have access to both objects graph. Therefore, if you get a record on one side, and you want to create a similar record on the other side, that's problematic on itself. And when you bring boxes into the picture, it's also very problematic. Wait, so, so, so when you say when you say problematic, I'm sorry, you're saying problematic or problem? Yeah, pro pro problematic. Yeah, problematic. it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem okay. because right. Um, so, uh, so, is it a problem on any grounds other than efficiency? I I believe the problem the. Uh, it might be that is efficiency is one of the problems that I, but I'm not sure. So I'm trying to explain what, the, what I believe the problems are. Let me explain it very quickly. So if I get the record here and I detect that the record is going to go through the callable boundary, I need to do some operations to either create a similar record on the other side mm -hmm. somehow, uh, or I build a record that I gave to you. Those are the two options. The problem with the second option um, is that the new record that we create is the same color of the side of the membrane that is that has the original record. So if you want to traverse and find out the boxes and replace those boxes with something else, that doesn't work. Right. Because the, you, the, the boxes ideas... you create are already on the same side. So it's pretty much the same thing. The... Right. I'm so, so I'm assuming the first one that, that what you do is you just transfer information across yeah, the call. Yeah, you have to boundary. transfer all these information to the other in order to get the other side to create a record on the other right. side. So right. that's very different from what we were saying initially, that the records would just travel through the membrane as records. So if that's well, the case. Uh, uh, if they, uh, it's obviously more efficient. It's the identity issue. It's no longer a problem because they go go back and forward. Then the problems are the boxes. Like how can yeah. I represent so, the so boxes they, differently yeah, so, one side of the fence of the other one? Yeah. So, so the current record in Temple proposal says uh, you cannot transport them across the boundary if they contain a box that contains an object, and you can if they don't contain a box that contains an object. So the way that to get back to Matthew's question about uh, efficiency is the way that the record and temple proposal enables efficiency is by providing this operation to check whether you deeply contain an object. This is where we came to in the discussion uh, a while ago uh, that, we need, this, I, that we need this check. Agree. And that's how we do this traversal. And we'll just pass the information over about when you're, when you're in a unit that does contain an object, then you have to pass things over piece by piece somehow. Yeah, but Daniel, uh, I, I don't think I don't think we have a problem with that. I think that works just fine. The problem is when we have boxes and how do we yeah, deal so with boxes? So when we have boxes, we pass it over in piece by piece, and when we don't have boxes, then we pass the whole thing over. So it, the the case with boxes is just like when you have an object and want to kind of represent it on the other side, and you you know pass over different incremental pieces of information in terms of primitives. Yeah. So, I, I, so, so, so I think I think the way to, to sort of summarize the point there is that if it contains a box, there's not necessarily any performance advantage for having used records and tuples containing the box rather than just using objects containing the box. But there might uh, be, there, yeah, it's other, not a right. There's other not intended to be a performance you. feature. It's it's a you know it it has this comparison function it, that's the uh, yeah kind of that's what you're so, getting out of it okay so 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 among the constraints that i believe we 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 must not break is that identity checks 
don't, don't introduce an interleaving. And if A object is B, then any computation that proceeds forward uh, that, pr that proceeds using A, if you substituted B for A, that computation would proceed forward in the same way. It would mean the same thing. That there cannot, right. be, if, A, if A object is B, there can't be any observable difference between A and B. Um, and therefore, a record in tuple and a proxy with behavior on a record in tuple cannot be triple equal, cannot be object is. Um, so therefore, I believe that this eager creation of the, what, what corresponds to the shadow target, it's as if you're creating the shadow target structure, but without wrapping it with a proxy, uh, that, that that's really the only solution for the record and tuple superstructure over the box. I don't think anything else avoids breaking fundamental invariance. Which, yeah. So I think the problem in, in what I presented earlier is that I went straight to my conclusion without going through the steps of my thinking last week. Uh, and I probably should have uh, gone through that uh, to help answer a lot of Carity's and Mark's questions. So basically, we, we all arrived at the same con conclusion. You need to eagerly recreate the structure on the other end, the immutable structure. Um, you can recreate it as hard an object if you want, but you can very well recreate a record. Uh, if you send a record uh, in, from one row, you recreate a record that has the same structure on, uh, on the other side, where all the boxes have been substituted for a box of a proxy. Um, and as uh, Daniel mentioned, like you can do that multiple ways. You can remove all the boxes and then say at all these location in the record, you're going to be recreating a box with um, all this information. And to make that somewhat more optimal, I figured we could rely on the callable boundary to allow a box of a function and for it to be automatically substituting um, uh, substituting it for a box of a function exotic wrapper. Um, so now when it gets on the other side, the other side can go in and create a proxy with just that. It doesn't have to eagerly go deep in that, in that, in that proxy. It just can create the, those proxy objects, those exit points, uh, in, in, and, and recreate a record uh, that way. Um, so that, that is the eager recreation of the immutable structure. Uh, so uh, a couple of comments on these. So, so, so the efficiency side of things, I think we could kind of solve it somehow. Um, uh, I'm, I, I, it would be tricky, but it would, it would be a good exercise to try to uh, recreate uh, a, a record and tuple on the other side that has boxes and then proxy those boxes somehow on the other side. I imagine that we could create a kind of a, 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 a record that where the box exists, you put a symbol that you understand that is a symbol that needs to be replaced with the box. You get it on the other side, so you create a kind of a phantom record that has these symbols. And then on the other side, you traverse that again, look for those symbols, and then start the communication about what is this object that needs to go into this. And then you create a final proc, the, the final uh, record to go on the other side. Not super efficient, but I, I, I hope that we can make it uh, fast enough and providing some libraries so people can do that efficiently or, or at least not super slow. But the, the second part of allowing boxes to be to, to go through um, when they are boxing over a callable, uh, that seems a very interesting thing to me to explore. I feel that uh, then the API of determining if something has boxes on it um, might be insufficient because you, you need to know, okay, it has boxes, but are those boxes functions, callables, and then go and do a, 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 a type of or something on, on all these things to see if it's callable, and then you let it pass. Otherwise, you do something else. I rather prefer to have a 
we tell you that there are boxes. We tell you um, that information. You decide whether or not you want it to pass it anyways. You pass it anyways. You try to access, and then it throws on access if it is not a, a callable okay. boundary. It seems like to me that 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 seems a little bit better, uh, easier, so and more efficient. Wouldn't the membrane uh, always, even for a function, always create a proxy for that function uh, because we don't know what might be attached to, uh, to that function anyway. So uh, for yeah. the efficiency of the membrane, the membrane would go in and no matter what it gets, an object, a function or whatever, it would uh, it, it would create, it would- Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, the distortion. Uh, yeah, if we mix the distortion, uh, yeah, if we eliminate the distortion, yeah. But if we mix the distortion into, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So. So it doesn't, it doesn't work even if we allow just simply to pass functions. I I, I would draw that. Yeah, I, I was I've been pretty confused about how box, special treatment of boxes over callables would would help anything. Yeah. yeah. So are we yeah. concluding that it wouldn't? So I'll it, stay. It, like, it, sorry, sorry if just to answer that question, it will help, but you still have to traverse and create a new. Uh, a new record before you let the record to pass through. Like you have the arena yellow record, you have to create like a, a, a similar to a shadow target, but a shadow record, let's say shadow record. That one has to have the, 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 uh, the, the, the same shape, but then you have to change the boxes with the proxies of the arena box value. Right. And right. that's the one that you give to the other guy. Right. And, and the, the, easy, the easy way to say it is that if the real record points at blue things, I'm sorry, at yellow things, then the shadow record uh, has the same shape at points at blue things. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's where I believe a native helper to map boxes in an existing record can be a lot more efficient uh, because the structure of the record itself doesn't change. It's just the boxes and uh, that, that, that does. Uh, oh, so sorry, I sorry, think sorry. there may be optimizations possible if uh, the engine natively uh, can do the mapping of, no, uh, I, of boxes. So no, I think I'd, I'd be right. interested it, in understanding this native mapping a bit more because yeah, uh, no, it Daniel, actually you're sounds... right, you're right. Daniel, you're right. It, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because for you to create a record that points to blue things, you will not be able to transfer that through the callable boundary. Yeah, you, you do too much. So you do too mapping. So the, the membrane on one side does a mapping of all the boxes that contain objects, functions, or whatever to the um, special membrane function. And so now uh, the record only contains boxes of uh, the membrane function that can be used, that can be transferred on the other side. It will be uh, exotic wrapped. On the other side, you map again that record with the same structure again, uh, and you create boxes of proxies using uh, your um, your membrane function that has been yeah, wrapped. Yeah, but, but you could you could so, you could do that with symbols. So you, there's not I mean, nothing especially. But yet, you yet, the advantage is that if you keep a box in the same place, you keep the structure entirely. Uh, uh, you keep the structure the I, same. You just have boxes with different content. So uh, my hope is that the engine can somehow optimize that by being able to I, copy the structure and replace the content of, uh, of the boxes. Yeah, I'd be curious to understand what kind of optimizations you think the engine can apply to, to do that. I'm also curious so, what kind of API you're picturing over this. And also, it seems like we're in agreement that this is a potential performance optimization. And so if it is, then can this be post MVP? Uh, and finally, I, I want to say that this this mapping of boxes does relate to feature requests that we've heard from other people, where yeah. some people say that they'd like boxes to serve this kind of template use case. And honestly, I still don't understand this use case, but I wonder if maybe you could work with advocates of that on a follow-on proposal to um, that would enable both this kind of templating use case and this optimization for for membranes. Yeah, yeah one I, I, I got the inspiration from the VDOM uh, advocates where they were like, oh, we want to compare the uh, structure, which basically would be the DOM tree structure, but with different um, elements uh, substituted in it. So different content. Yeah. So, um, Honestly, I don't understand what any of you think that engines do. Like, what do you think engines are going to be able to do better? Uh, 
win with this. I'm sorry, I mean, that wasn't meant I, to sound I, so I, insulting. I, 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 I have somehow an imp a possible implementation in my mind of uh, yeah. a uh, of a box of a record structure uh, with holes and a uh, side linked list. Uh, for the box contents for all of those, and you would just be able to uh, substitute the, the the linked list of uh, of the boxes and and create a yeah. new record that has different identity, uh, but it would have the same structure that's stored separately from the box contents. So, so okay, it, yeah. So there are two problems with this. One problem is uh, part of that side table might become unreachable while other parts are reachable, and then it's unclear how the engine should deal with that. And then the other problem, which is more basic, is okay, now you have another level of indirection. And so getting the contents of a box becomes like one extra indirection slower. And do you really want to do that? So, so Daniel, so, trying so, to answer your, your previous question of whether or not this is a, should be part of the MVP. Um, I'm shifting the focus from the membrane. I still think that there is usefulness on letting the record to go through and, and throw on access if it is not a function. Aside from like, forget about membranes for a second. Um, you want to implement some sort of coordination between the call, the, the, the incubator realm and the new realm. And then you want to have some sort of, of logic in between of, of something like that, the protocol that you define, you want to use records to pass a structure. And in those uh, structures, you want to pass some functions that can be used to do the coordination, I think that will be useful in general. Um, Could you give a concrete example? I don't have, I do not have say, a picture. A picture yeah, of let's say that uh, I want to implement some sort of a iterator over the um, a async iterator over the, the callable membrane. So I need to provide some metadata about what position I'm in the iterator and so on, and then providing maybe the functions that you can call once you have to uh, go to the next uh, item in the list and so on. So you have to provide uh, multiple values to the other side. But the problem is that the other side calls you once and receive only one return value. The return value could be only a primitive value or a callable, but you want to provide more values. You want to provide data, uh, some primitive values and a function. So how you do that, you cannot return, you have to go multiple round trips just to get the information that you want. That's one of the so, problems of optimizations that we have today with the, with the implementation. So if I can provide a record that contains all the metadata that I want, plus the functions that will do the operations on coordination, then that's easier. Because I just produce, every time you call a function on the other side, that returns a record. That record contains all the information that I need, which is primitive, and all the functions that I might need to call to do more coordination. And then the other side does the same. So the coordination becomes a lot more simple. So I agree that this would be nice. Uh, I guess there's two parts to it. One part is ergonomics and another part is, is performance overhead. Uh, as, as far as performance overhead goes, uh, sure, yeah, I guess doing the check at the time of access uh, would help reduce the performance overhead of like having two function calls versus one function call. Um, yeah, I don't know and, how much the access... I don't know how much overhead there really is to having two function calls because the only thing that happens at the boundary is, you know, this check whether it's a primitive. Uh, the you know the other thing is ergonomics that it's kind of annoying to set up a protocol where you have to like make these different function calls and interpret either the positionality or like the other things that were sent before, after it to, I, I, to, to build this awkward protocol. I, I mean, so I don't, know, I, I don't know what the spec, uh, uh, the current state of, this, the state of the spec for record and tuple is, I will look into it for sure. But if the access is simply, if the record is somehow, or the box somehow has information about what realm was that record created off, and when you try to access the value, we apply the exact same routines that we have today, which is just saying, okay, who, who is the caller, a record, the, the caller uh, realm, and then you go through the uh, get value, get wrap function value thing that yeah. we have. That, that's a uh, very straightforward. 
process, I think, is so, very generic. Yeah, so this is exactly what I proposed to this group, and Bradley objected to that, saying, and maybe, maybe Bradley, you could summarize the, the logic that you used. Uh, but was, but over, overall, I'm <laughs> sorry. sorry? I was reading something for work. Oh, okay. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, you know, I previously proposed the thing that Carity is saying, which is that you have uh, boxes that contain whatever, and uh, sure, you can transfer you can transfer those to a realm. Uh, it's just that when you access it, then it still remembers where it came from, and you know, throws an error if it's not a callable or it wraps the callable if needed. And your objection, if I remember correctly, had to do with this would be kind of anti or asymmetrical compared to if you just pass the function outside of a box, because if you round Correct. trip it, you don't get the same identity. Whereas with a box, suddenly you can get the same identity. Is that yep. is that a correct? Uh, and it also summary? means you. But that's yes. not observable, right? Because you never have. It's totally observable. To... You just compare them. But you don't have access to the other function on the other realm. No, no, oh. you send it back. It's about round tripping. If you send a box to the other side and then you send it back and you get the function out, then it has the same function in it. Uh, so but this has so like a litany we, of weird things that start to occur, um, okay. especially if you preserve identity. Can you explain so, that again? I, I didn't quite get what Daniel was saying that you send it back. Like, yeah, so you have an identity function that you like pass into another realm. Mm -hmm. uh, if you and then you like pass it back. So then if you invoke that identity function uh, or like so you, you have an identity function from, you know, passed pass from another realm or you uh, so it, so it's going to do this callable boundary thing. Basically, it's just an identity function with the callable boundary applied mm -hmm. uh, with with the callable boundary like double applied. So if you pass a uh, a primitive to it, okay, you get the same primitive. If you pass a box to it, yeah, you get the same box back. If you pass a function, you don't get the same function back. You get an observably different function because it's wrapped twice. And so if you pass a box that contains a function and you look at what it contains, well, this is kind of asymmetrical that it's not containing the same thing. I see. So, so the identity in a box is, is preserved while the identity outside of the box is not, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and I think we could do it that, well, if you pass a wrapped function back to the original side, then it's just gonna unwrap it. Well, maybe we could do those semantics, but it adds a lot of complexity, I think. Well, I think the, 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 the issue that you, both of you are highlighting here is only through, it's only through if, you, if, if you are passing the function itself, but if you pass the record back, then, so the problem is if you preserve the identity. So the problem is if you send it with a record and a box. Mm -hmm. And then the only way it, come back, it can come back is if you pass the record back. Yep. And there's nothing preventing you from doing so. It seems mm -hmm. reasonable. Seems actually uh, very interesting sure. from the perspective of being able to do a membrane that is a lot more optimized. Um, uh, I don't I, think it's optimized because you're going to cause a lot of memory leaks last I thought about this, because now you're having to preserve any duplicate record box combination for the future. I, Sorry, who will have so to preserve when I, when it? I, I'm not sure I followed everything, but when I thought about this, my uh, my conclusion was uh, when you get a record that has uh, identity bearing objects in it, um, you should be able to put it in the weak map uh, uh, before going into the membrane, see if you've already created a, uh, a mapping for that on the other side. And uh, so yep, if you ever end up passing it back, uh, you just like say, oh, um, this is this record um, uh, somehow. Right, but we're, we're, I think we're past the membrane discussion. Like we're not really looking into the. At least I wasn't really looking into the membrane, but just generic communication between the two sides via a custom-made protocol that could be the, the membrane protocol. Yeah, but so more generic, more more simple one. Um, um, so yeah, so I'd like to understand more 
why so uh, check there, on access this, will be an issue? Um, the problem is preserving the identity. It is not necessarily access. By preserving an identity, if you've ever done remote objects across distributed systems, preserving identities across distributed systems is a plague of memory leaks. So generally you create new identities in a localized system. Um, here we have realm A and realm B. If realm A passes a function, let's say we're preserving identity for all times because this is the only problematic case. If realm A passes a function foo uh, to realm B, you get foo prime. And if realm B passes it to function A, you get foo, not foo prime. So this means that for both realms, you have to preserve a table of potential incoming things that need to be mapped to their counterparts in the opposite realm. Doing so cannot realistically be garbage collected until the entire realm is garbage collected, unfortunately, or any communications channel between the realms is completely cut off. Why, That's the can, you, can, you, can you explain that again? I didn't get that. Why is a weak map uh, type structure not, uh, even internal to the engine not sufficient there? Uh, even if you have the weak map on realm B, it's kept alive by realm A. The what's kept alive? The the Who what, prime is kept alive by I, Fu in realm A. I Only think, the uh, is kept alive. If you have just, a cycle, if you the, the, the problem is if you've got an inter-realm cycle that is garbage. So as so it doesn't need to stay a cycle. It can all exist on realm A at the end. We don't preserve uh, it in realm B, but well, it's still I, needs to keep food prime alive. Uh, inter, so inter-realm cycles can be constructed already just with the function wrapping thing. Yep. Uh, you need a unified garbage collector. Yeah. Yep. You, yeah. you, you know, all this stuff is synchronous. It doesn't work in distributed systems. You could, um, we could, we could have as a goal that something analogous will work in distributed systems. So we do, we but, do have, the, we do have that goal, and we do have the mechanism. The thing that's, an, I mean, this was, this was all, this all comes from the the history of garbage collection concepts in the E language. Uh, the weak maps and, and proxies together were designed exactly to enable good membranes uh, for synchronous, you know, um, single address space garbage collection under one garbage collector, where the ephemeron collection logic uh, enabled both the collection of uh, cycles that cross the membrane, uh, as well as if the membrane is revoked, collecting everything within the now inaccessible object wrap. That was a very interesting problem uh, to solve both of those, and I believe the ephemeron collection <clears throat> uh, mechanism is the only known solution that can do both of those. Uh, I believe we preserve that uh, with the callable boundary under the assumption that the um, that the that that both sides the the realms jointly are under one garbage collector, and that if the exotic function is not referenced then the function that it's an exotic for is also collected. And that if that function is holding on to an exotic that, uh, you know, if a blue exotic is holding on to a regular yellow that holds on to a yellow exotic for a blue regular that holds on to the blue exotic, if you've got that cycle, but you've all got it under one garbage collector, we're assuming that cycle goes away. Now, for the distributed case, uh, weak maps don't help at all. What helps, what helps exactly is weak references and finalization. That was the motivating use for that. And that does not collect cycles. Uh, that collects acyclic distributed garbage. Um, at Electric Communities, uh, we did do a further elaboration, which we're not proposing, uh, that Matthew uh, amazingly rediscovered I think almost the identical logic for it actually described it in a, in a substantially simpler manner, uh, but we're still not proposing that. Uh, the actual experience we generally have with distributed garbage is distributed garbage is, is quite often acyclic. The fact that we leak distributed cycles uh, so far has not bit us, although at some point I expect it will. Uh, but that's I wouldn't be surprised if that's decades out before we have to face that problem. 
uh, that has actually been uh, biting uh, people doing dumb uh, remoting uh, uh, to workers, but that's another uh, topic. <laughs> yeah, dumb remoting. I I I, I should have said well-constructed configure distributed systems and anything having to do with the DOM is by definition not well-constructed. So to be well, clear here, I like helping even in a local system without distributed, you still leak memory currently. I'm very well aware of the electric, what, what's this web page I have open? The electric community's distributed garbage collector white paper. Um, Distributed I'm, I'm just well, means be, between, distributed should be understood in the abstract as between separate garbage collectors as opposed to within the view of a single unified garbage collector. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Um, so the problem here is you don't necessarily uh, have a cycle. It's not a strong cycle, at least, but weak cycles leak. How? Uh, sorry, so leak, your, weak cycle so, between, give me an example. So, Realm A and B, Realm A has Foo, Foo is passed to Realm B, you get Foo Prime, which keeps Foo alive. As long as Foo Prime is referenced, it, yeah. Regardless of if it's weakly referenced. Sorry, weakly referenced as in weak so math, or weakly referenced weakly as in weak If stores in any way a identity for Foo Prime, you keep Foo alive. Uh, this sorry, is the, going to if, if, make more if, sense in a yeah, second. Yeah, if you put it in oh, a weak map, you put if it in a weak map, just, that's all you're saying. If you weak map, weak ref, doesn't matter. It's going to keep Foo alive. No, that's no, not no, true. No, 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 no. That's just not so true. Hold on. I'm going to try to finish the example. Okay, sorry. So, so you have Foo still alive for whatever reason in realm A. Um, it's going to want to be garbage collected. It has gained a reference to Foo Prime, correct? And then Foo Prime is held. Um, and if you do not hold both weekly, you leak memory. So Foo Prime has to be held uh, weekly by B and Foo has to be held weekly by A in order for a cycle to be collected. That right. means foo can yeah, never Yeah, if there's a strong reference back. to something in a cycle, then it stays alive. Sorry, I, I'm not following that part. Correct. I'm saying this is going to cause memory leaks. Not that it's unexpected, but it's I, I, I don't terrible. Understand, I, I don't, don't understand what, okay. Can you give a scenario where you have a memory leak when you have the structure across a boundary but if you had the same logical structure without the boundary, that you would not have a leak. I have a clarifying question here. Bradley, is your concern that basically um, objects that are only weakly referenced in realm A might be kept alive because there is a strong reference to a wrapper of uh, such object in realm B? And vice versa. The, uh, right. If there's a strong reference, so, then you need to keep the cycle around. It's not a leak. Yeah, it's, it's not a leak, exactly. You, you have it, you, so, you keep it there because you can call it. You can argue that it's not a leak. Leak is a loose term. I'm saying it's a leak in my definition. But it, it, you, 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 have the same leak, a, you would have yeah, the Bradley. same leak without the boundary, right? If you simply, if the application has a pointer into a cycle of objects all within one realm within you know uh where there's no with you know with no boundaries no realm boundaries no membrane boundaries if you just have a pointer into a cycle then that causes a leak there's no reference to the object in b that can actually be reflected to get to that is the leak why is that the so i feel like we're missing some context uh, why is there a strong reference to this, but it's like not useful? So strong references are very common in JavaScript. They're really hard to get rid of if you use TypeScript because you can't delete function definitions and things like that because TypeScript gets angry. Um, so just passing a function of any form or fashion, I, my presumption is you're going to strongly hold it in most cases via JavaScript source text. 
I'm still I'm still missing a lot of context. Uh, so, when is the when is a function closing over something, but you want the thing that it closes over to actually be collected? Like maybe you can give a concrete example rather than this this more general thing. So let's be more concrete then. You have a function in a file. This file exports the function because it's a module. The module can no longer ever garbage collect that function. And under current VM semantics, you can never ever collect that module until the realm dies. Yep. Okay. Therefore, if you pass this function into the other realm, no matter what, you're going to have to keep that other one alive forever. I'm not saying that it's unexpected. I'm saying the problem is this is going to happen everywhere. Like if I how does a the listener to so window, it, it shouldn't be garbage collected. I agree, but that doesn't make it not crash my program because people keep attaching things to window. So Bradley, how does this connect to your preference that we not allow boxes to be sent to another realm? So this uh, is because you were, you were, the other way would be that we pass the function and then you get a function wrapper and you're yep. still referencing the thing in the other realm. So I don't really understand what the difference is. So you could be referencing stuff. That's true. But at least with that form, uh, you can garbage collect some stuff potentially. You can't collect everything, but by not having the exact same function identity, by having a wrapper, you can at least garbage collect some. Windows. Can you give an you example of what it's you could no longer collect? has a direct? So if you so one thing we haven't talked about a concern of this auto boxing behavior. Um, if you have a function with a static property on it, something on the function itself, you like will not get that. You, you you would not be able to get that um, from the other side, right? Correct, but we keep it alive if this identity is preserved. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I think there's a disagreement on what we are calling a leak here. I am saying things that cause programming patterns that are very difficult to prevent an increase in memory over time are a leak. I think the other side is saying anything that produces a strong cycle can never be considered a memory leak. So, so Bradley, I'm I'm on board with you with this more expensive, pragmatic definition of leaks. And I guess uh, what I'm missing is your your history and experience debugging memory leaks in practice. So, the example of uh, okay, you have a static property that's uh, that's on the function. Yeah, I see how that's unreachable. Engines might be able to be taught how to collect that because the only thing you can access if it's wrapped is its, is its callableness. Uh, yeah, this, is quite, access, this is quite specific. Uh, you, this is a very, the, very specific uh, property. I feel like it would have been easier if you led with this, if you were to say, well, no, it's not the I only one, want- But it's a symptom caused by this. Can you, can, can, so, let me, let me, let me um, propose a level, you know, a, a a distinction that um, will help us distinguish what level of ambition um, we should be shooting for and what level of ambition we should not be shooting for. Um, without any boundaries, without any membranes, without any callable boundaries, just regular JavaScript. In the software engineering sense that Bradley's talking about, it's leaky. People have leak bugs in programs because they're strongly holding on to things that they didn't notice they were doing so. And it's hard to debug that. And it's a hazard of JavaScript. And we all understand that. And yes, it would be great over time to find ways to make that less hazardous. However, whatever that level of hazard is in normal JavaScript, when you introduce boundary mechanisms like membranes or like callable boundaries, we should not expect that hazard to go down. If there's no reason why an introduced boundary should cause that you cause us to to uh, make progress reducing the hazard that we would have had without the boundary, 
the level of ambition that's appropriate and that is already hard is that, that, is that introducing the boundary does not make the hazard worse. If introducing the boundary does not make the hazard worse, we're winning. And in the distributed case, we're not there because uh, for the distributed case, distributed meaning between independent garbage collectors, um, we don't have technology that we're willing to propose that will collect distributed, distributed cycles. Um, but within a single, within the purview of a single garbage collector, uh, we believe we can avoid making the situation worse. And I think for the boundary proposals, that's as much as they, they should have on their plate. So my disagreement here is I do think it makes it worse in practice. So in theory, one, maybe not. What, one practice, thing, that, I think it one question for you, Bradley. The, when you go through, I, I believe it makes it better than the, the other case where you have to detect that the record has boxes and you have to traverse and eagerly recreate those boxes and do things about it or eliminate the boxes or do the coordination when you don't know if the other side is even going to do anything with it. Um, but they, in principle, if we give you the record and you hold uh, the record strongly, um, you're only going to get into the box and access the content of the box when you need to. And at that point, that's equivalent to just simply call a function on the other side and return something that you hold onto it. So for me, it's kind of the same thing that will happen if you are just interacting with the record and accessing the content of boxes out of, that, of a record. I don't see a big difference there. I think, I think there's a huge difference with whether we allow boxes here. It's a huge conceptual difference because it, it really changes between whether we want to allow identities uh, to be directly modeled to be shareable between uh, between realms, uh, and that I do agree. And so and that I do they, agree. I'm talking so about. So I think it would. Leak, it's. I don't think it's a memory leak. I, I remain unconvinced by by these arguments about the leak. Or maybe I mean I want to hear more, but I'm not. I don't understand it yet. But for another example of where this comes up, this decision about whether we want identities to be shared, uh, maybe a more profound case is is multi-threading. Do we want to? I mean, it would be cool if records and doubles could be shared between multiple threads. And in that multi-threading case, should we allow boxes to be shared? Uh, you know, the easy answer is obviously no. Uh, on the web, this could happen sooner than later with the structured clone definition for records and tuples. So there are a few alternatives. One alternative is, uh, you know, first of all, I'm not, I don't think the web is gonna immediately embrace multi-threaded cycle collection. And, but if it did one day, then, you know, it'd be pretty cool if we could have boxes to represent the identities in, in records and tuples and pass them back and forth. So you could have this opaque mapping to an object. Uh, I, and, and so as a, as a near term question, there's the question between whether putting a box in a record or tuple that points to an object, when you structured clone that, should it throw? or should it just structured clone the contents of the box? And uh, throw would be kind of the answer that we would choose if we want to you know, future-proof ourselves for a later possibility of actually just directly passing the identity across threads. Also, to be clear, I'm not opposed to changing my opinion. I'm just trying to explain it. I do think this is a real practical memory leak that I'm gonna debug very soon after people start using it. Um, I do think we can, at least if we match the behavior of a boxed and unboxed thing or function, it would alleviate enough of my concern to just be okay with it. Because that's at least one source of debugging problems I won't have to deal what, with. And I can focus what are on you that. proposing? What is it that you'd be okay with? If when you pass a unboxed function, it has the same behavior as passing a boxed function. 
you you get the same result because that is not currently how a callable boundary is looking at if we preserve boxed oh, internals I, versus unboxed ones being new I, wrappers. But then that, that I was that, I was suggesting that I was suggesting to have the same behavior uh, passing a, a box function with a non box function. Yeah. No. I, no. No. I think what, what you you so, were suggesting that I think this that lines up. I still, uh, I guess I would still personally prefer to start out minimal here and just prohibit passing boxes that contain any object. I could see how we could later add this loosening to permit it with various uh, possible semantics. And I think that's something that we could do uh, later and start with this very minimal semantics that, that we know is, is expressive enough for everything that it's gonna be kind of inconvenient uh, but but it seems like it should be good enough. Yeah, I, I, I rather prefer to, to to spend more time thinking more about these and trying to figure if we if we could do this. I'm very worried about the efficiency of of the communication between the two realms when you have records and tuple, and the complications and uh, complexities you will be adding. The ergonomics of it will be horrible. You have to. Now traverse, did traverse, reconstruct the record uh, without those things, and 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 if you just want to pass something to the other side, and then do more coordination, which is already complicated through the callable boundary. Now you have to make it for records and tuple would be just a lot more difficult. But uh, they are considered Korea, primitive Korea, bodies. So. Yeah, Korea, I have a question for you. Something I've been curious about that that bears on this issue. Uh, completely forgetting records and tuples, just with the existing work that you've done on the callable boundary and on rebuilding membranes on top of the callable boundary, what do you expect the overhead of a full distortion-free membrane on top of the callable boundary is compared to um, a normal distortion-free membrane without a callable boundary, just constructed by normal means? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we are actually in the process of right now. So we wrote, I wrote the example of a callable boundary membrane, yeah. distortion free. I have that. And now we're in the process. That's kind of a, a very simple implementation. It doesn't have a lot of whistles and such. And now we are in the process of moving those concepts back into the, the, the production code that we have, trying to align then shooting for six months or something to try to align to the point where the membrane that we have can work across the callable boundary. And um, we were finding new optimizations using bitwise operations and such to send the metadata between the two sides and all that, wow. uh, which it might be like the shape of the target on the other side, you can serialize it into a bitwise uh, operations that you will carry on on the other side, which will speed up things. Wow. We're doing some stuff there. Uh, we, we don't have numbers yet, but yeah. um, but my concern is, okay, let's say that is about the same, or um, uh, it, it, it cannot be better. It cannot be better because that means my, that you my, can yeah, go- my, my concern is if it's only a factor of two worse, then I think we can just live with it. If no, I, I don't think it will be a factor. a factor of two. I think it will be the same um, because the same concepts can be applied to the regular ones um, in a optimized way. I'm, 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 and again, I'm, I'm talking about getting a membrane that is sufficiently strong, meaning you never leak anything to the other side, which is the overhead that you add in a regular membrane. Like you have to put all this... Uh, I would say it's a compensation effort because in a regular membrane, you have to cover all the cases of throwing on the other side, leaking an error, doing all these things. In this one, you don't have to do that because that's covered by the engine. So, but you have to cover the cases that you don't have direct access to the target on the other side and so on. So I think it will be about the same. Okay. Um, um, but the problem that we're describing here is what worries me because the minute you add records and tuples to the equation. Now you have to go and add tons of complexity on top of it. Wait, but records records and tuples are handled pretty analogously to objects. 
I mean, there, there's two things. There's one thing you were talking about, making a more ergonomic way to communicate across the boundary using records and tuples as an implementation detail. And I think we would be saying like, eh, sorry, uh, this isn't what we're getting right now. Um, the other right. thing is you're, how you you're pass- right. rec- you're, you're right. Like if we say you can only pass a record that does not have any boxes on it, but when you are constructing membrane, that doesn't work. You have to build the record on the other side that yeah. is equivalent to this one. And that complexity so, has to be added to the membrane implementation to recreate the record with the boxes proxified on the other side and all that. So I'm yeah. worried about that complexity to be add up. To- I don't I don't see why that would be especially complex, like more complex than dealing with objects. And I, you know, I would be convinced about the uh, oh, no, no. performance. It, it, is, it is more complex, Daniel, because for objects, you do everything lazy. Uh, okay. I don't know. There's uh, eager, there, I agree that there is the eager versus lazy. So it's not just a duplication of the same code, but I think that the eager, uh, doing it eagerly should not be more complex than the code that does it for objects lazily. For objects though, you just use the proxy hooks. You don't have to do a full traversal system. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, missing why traversal is, is like hard. Yeah, no, it's, but, it's, it's, it's slow. It's not only hot, it's a slow. Well, sure. that was the whole, why we had the whole discussion earlier where, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, we were talking about, can we do this lazily? But, you but know, I don't, I don't think I don't, engines are going to optimize. Oh, I, th- I, think we, I think we can't do it lazily. I think that means that if you're only going to touch a tiny for- portion of the structure that you've paid an overhead of doing eagerly something you're only using a small piece of, but that's not going to be the common case. And if you do eventually use all of it, then you still have the same amortized overhead. You just took the hit up front rather than spreading it out over time. Uh, and the complexity of the of, of the traversal, I completely agree with Daniel. There's nothing complex about that traversal. I mean, it's easy for me to say because I'm not implementing it, but- I've, I've implemented uh, this kind of thing multiple times. There's nothing complex about yeah, that traversal. Uh, so, I, can, I can go back so next the, week with, with more details. I can try it out. Or uh, to try to replicate this and see how it goes, but again, like uh, I, I feel that we should spend time figuring you, out if we want uh, the boxes to to throw I mean, access. Re- really, if you pass over a record and tuple, it's like the thing that you want to wrap, and you pass it over the membrane boundary, and you expect the box, the default box handling, to do something meaningful. It just it just won't do anything meaningful. You're gonna have to transfer the contents of the boxes over in some other way. Yeah. So you're still going to have to traverse the original structure. Yeah, no, I think at the membrane level, yeah, I'm more on the coordination between the two sides to be able to build the thing on the other side and so on. Like- well, then it sounds like you're talking about ergonomics and that's unrelated. And uh, I'm not convinced we should care about ergonomics. I think we should be focusing on the, the performance. You were saying you expected the performance to be the same. For ergonomics, you can build no, an no, abstraction no. I mean, that does when, all this. When, mm-hmm. if we get records and tuples to, to, to be able to pass um, uh, functions through boxes um, and be able to use that information to do better coordination between the two sides of things, we definitely will be able to create a better membrane, a faster membrane. I have a point okay. of order. Um, this conversation is clearly on fire. If I were to put a wet blanket onto it, would we be able to light that fire again next week? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I'd love to hear more details. It sounds like you're saying we might be able to get membranes that are faster than ever before with records and tuples that have this nice box semantics, and that would be cool. Yeah, uh, I, I can I can write something down, uh, some examples of, of the coordinations that we do today and the coordinations that we will do tomorrow if we have uh, the records and tuples with the wrapper functions on it. Um, try to illustrate why I feel that this will be way better. Um, but I understand that adding that introduces the identity issues that we discussed. Uh, I understand that that's a um, different kind of problem that we'll have to think about. Um, I, I'll try to think about it. Something I would like to discuss next week uh, is also the need of uh, being able to box uh, non-identity bearing objects slash primitives or other records. 
All right. Sounds like Let, a great agenda. All right. Let's call it here and uh, and resume next week. Thanks, everyone. I'm gonna Good discussion. Recording. <laughs>